All right, y'all, we just got back from Crystal River. Rico came over to my house earlier today, his girlfriend Ashley, and found some bad news. But first, let's go watch that footage. Rico here. I'm at Blue Gabe's house, and I'm working on his computer while he's in Crystal River. My kids just found something crazy. Check this out. I know, we're coming, we're coming. Look at this. So what is it? Tell them what you just found. Sheila out of the tank because we, she's under the basketball game. We need, we need water. Give me some water, please. Wow. Eva? Frank is a legend if he did that. Where's Frank at? I don't know. Look for him. Do you see him? I see him. He's trying to hide. He doesn't want us to know what he did. Look down there. He's a murderer. He's so angry. At Sheila? What if he got out? That'd be crazy. He is not okay with you going near that tank, guys. Watch it. You might be next. Grab Sheila. You want to go ahead and give it a try? She's not happy. She's been out of water for a while. She's drying up. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go, That's Sheila. Scary. I'm going to take a guess that Frank threw her out. But we're going to try. Let's put her on this side. Frank's not going to be okay with this. Get her in slow. She don't want to go back in. They must have had a really big fight. She just will not let go. She's probably still trying to get used to the water. Come on, Sheila. You are not in harm, I promise you. Now, Frank is fat and happy. He's completely content. But, come over here and show him. Look at Sheila. Dead as a doornail. Now, these two haven't had exactly the best relationship. So we're gonna go with Frank threw her out of the tank. Because, come up here and show him this. This is the only place Sheila could have got out, was right there. And I highly doubt she did it on her own. There must have been a serious fight going down in this tank. There was food, there's space, a lot of room. He's still happy, even though one thing I've noticed, I've had other people try to feed Frank and he goes nuts, but when I feed him, he's pretty much content. He doesn't go all crazy and start swimming around. I'm not going to say Frank and I are tight, but I'm going to say for a fact that Frank, I don't know if he can see my body or what, but he recognizes something with me and doesn't go overboard. Right now, we're going to get this tank a little bit cleaned up, dispose of her. Jake and Luke are going to be upset, but they're not here right now. We have some more awesome footage though of Crystal River. Right now, I'm going to take you to the spring right next to the plantation, right next to where we were staying. You guys, this footage is as good as it gets, but it wasn't, it doesn't really fit in anywhere with the stuff that we did. So right now, let's go there and let me show you what we did.
I told you that was beautiful. So the water, it had rained a lot last week. So the first like four foot of the water column was a little dirty, but once you broke through that, it was as clear as just the air. Such an awesome experience. If you guys can go to the plantation or anywhere in Crystal River, highly recommended. Look at poor Sheila. So Robert, my brother, I called him. He said that with his experience of crabs, anytime you take him out of the water, when Rico and his kids found this crab, it was perfectly alive. It hung onto these tongs for like five minutes before she let go. But Robert said anytime a crab's out of the water for a long time and you put them straight back in the water, they generally don't make it. Or the stress alone could have killed her. But I got one more surprise. We've got all that grouper, hogfish, sheep's head, and all this good fish. So we're going to throw down in the kitchen and cook y'all some awesome fish. Don't go anywhere because we're still not done. All right, y'all. I know this is a crazy all-around video. I was never expecting to come back and Sheila be in the game room. Rico did his best to save her, but unfortunately she died. Redneck, come here since you always you want some attention. Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? Hey, buddy. Come here. What? Are you depressed Grandma dropped you off? Redneck has been with my parents for like a week since we've been traveling. So anyhow, Sheila died. We put her back in the tank. She died. She's gone. She's gone forever. Frank's back to being a bachelor, which I don't think he's unhappy about. But right now I want to show you all a little tip. So on this trip, do we wreck the fish? Look at all these bags of grouper and hogfish. So whenever I come home from a big trip, I see so many people soak their fillets in water and just not take care of it when they're bagging it up to put it in a freezer. Me on the other hand, I completely dry my fillets. That's laying on a dry napkin and there's no water on it. Take me a vacuum seal bag and I try to always put like, you know, I know me and my kids will eat about four pieces per meal. So I'll sometimes take five pieces just in case you got an uninvited guest or an unexpected guest. I'll put it in this vacuum sealer. Now mine's getting old. I probably need to get a new one here soon. When I'm vacuum sealing it, I sit here and keep squishing the air out to make sure as much air as I can, I can get out of it. Hit seal, and we're done. Now I can take all these bags of fish a lot of times when I'm going on a hunting trip or any kind of trip where people don't get fresh seafood, I'll put some of these frozen in my carry-on. I know people I elk hunt with in Colorado, they love it and I'll bring it with me. So right now I'm going to put all this fish in the freezer, then we're going to get over here up on these grouper cheeks. But right this second, let's go back to Crystal River and I'm going to show you guys how Captain Blake gets the cheek off of a grouper. We'll be right back. I always start on side take it you find it right there where his mouth meets his jaw and it's nice and soft so you're just gonna put it right in there you, there's a bone in there you're just gonna keep following it around until you get to the top Do the same thing right here and then gonna pop it out right there along his mouth line because it's really soft take it slowly peel it back and then you'll see there's a little bone right here so you're just gonna kind of get right up there put it right against the skin and it's just gonna peel off just like that. So yeah, Blake, hang him high, sport fishing charters, y'all. I found him on Instagram. A girlfriend of mine from down south went. I was creeping on her photos. I'm like, dude, I gotta find out who that guy was. Sent him a message. He was totally booked up for the year, but luckily for us, he had one cancellation. And when he said he did, we aired out and went fishing. But another friend of mine got me some of these shrimp from Indian River. Nice fresh shrimp. So we're gonna add this to the menu. Wasn't expecting it, but he gave them to me. They're fresh, I don't wanna freeze them. I'm trying a new seasoning, Dano's Original. This guy has sent me these seasonings and begged me to use them. So I'm gonna give him a little shout out. I got my can cooker breader. It's all I'm doing, just a little bit of Dano's. I've got flour in here. This can cooker breader, dude, you'll see me use it a lot just because it's so clean and so easy to use. Couple shakes, you're good to go. Pop it like that. Pop it like it's hot. Now watch this. I don't even have to touch them. Mm. 
You think those would be good, Rico? Oh yeah. Rico's behind the camera, y'all. In case you're wondering who's filming me. Alright y'all, so I'm making one of my favorite all-time dishes, except for this time I'm adding coconut on the grouper. I'm going to make grouper cheeks, grouper filet, grouper fingers, coconut crusted with panko deep fried. So all I'm going to do is take my cheeks, put them in the breader just like I did the shrimp, take a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt, only on one side, I'm not going to go crazy with it. We got kids y'all. Anybody knows you have kids? There's going to be side noise. I'm going to just take them now. Put them straight in buttermilk. This is just to help the panko stick to them now. Come over here with my panko. It's just this simple. Give them a bath. Just like that. And repeat to each one. All right, we back. Shrimp are done. I'll let them cook for, I don't know, three, four minutes. I probably could have put a little bit less in at one time, but still got the job done. I want y'all to leave a comment below and tell me what's your favorite part of this video thus far. I know it's a little bit crazy, it's a little bit all over the place, sort of like a vlog video. But hey, not everything we do goes in 100% order, so sometimes I gotta wing it. Not all my videos can be perfect, let that grease warm back up a little bit. These grouper cheeks are going to be good. It's not every day you can catch so many grouper that you have this many grouper cheeks. I can tell you one thing, Blake, from the time I met him to the time I left the other day was nothing more or nothing short of professional. His mannerism, you could bring kids with him, you could cut loose with him, top notch dude. In the plantation at Crystal River, you guys are going to see a bunch of videos of me and my kids, me and Rico, Robert and I. I can't wait to take y'all back and show you the springs, show you more of the springs and the manatees. Let this cook for about two minutes, and we'll be right back. But can y'all smell it? All right, so I was going to put shaved coconut on the fish, but I completely changed my mind. I'm going to put the shaved coconut in the rice and do it like I've always done it. It's just easier, a lot less work. The kids are getting hungry and screaming, why aren't the food ready? So I'm going to take a pretty good handful of coconut. Eh, a little bit more than that, about that much. Why are you always calling me when I'm trying to cook on the show? Hey, do you have a picture of me in between the four motors with the two... Grouper? He's worried about a thumbnail, y'all, while I'm cooking. Yeah, I'll send it to you in a minute. No, send it now. I'm trying to upload. <laughs> I'll send it now. Don't worry, I just got food burning on the stove. Bye. All right. As y'all can see, we're just like all of y'all. It's complete chaos. Watch this. Watch this. Get in here tight. Anytime you're frying with panko, you better be careful because it can burn really, really fast. Another minute or so, and these, that batch is done. All right, so in my butter and my coconut, I'm going to add a big heaping spoonful of garlic. And you better start stirring because this coconut will burn quick. You don't want it to get real black because then it'll taste bad. Let that cook for a second. Take this first back. The cheeks off. This is one of those meals that you better be on your A game because it could burn quick. Any part of it. Look at that. What's it smell like, Rico? Mmm, smells like dinner. It's gonna be good. I really like the garlic part of this. It adds that sweet, salty. I know a bunch of y'all are probably thinking, holy cow, that's a lot of coconut. If you're single and you got a date, you want to get like serious brownie points with the new chick, cook this meal. She'd be like, whoa, this guy here knows what he's talking about. Just dump it all in there. All right, so while that's cooking, let me show you what I'm going to do next. Take raw honey. Don't be scared to use a bunch of it. Watch this as we just make all this, like Robert Deermeet would say, fall in love. You want to blend it up really, really well though, so you don't get you know one bite with a ton of coconut and then one with none. Since we have so much chaos, I'm not going to fix 
and show you all at the dinner table. It's just too much going on. But I made these, didn't show you how to do it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it now. These are jalapeno poppers stuffed with seafood. It's just jalapenos, bacon, and seafood stuffing. Here's the box that the seafood stuffing come in from our grocery store. It's just a seafood salad wrapped in bacon with fresh jalapeno and it is oh so good. I cook it in the oven on convection bake for about, I don't know, 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Take a big heaping spoon of this coconut rice. Take two of these grouper cheeks. Take some fresh green beans that I snapped myself. All right, here it is. This is the final touch. Now, the reason I use garlic salt on this is I wanted that sweet and salty taste. Look at that. Those are grouper cheeks, panko crusted, fresh green beans, jalapeno poppers on coconut rice. But can y'all smell it? That's it. I need to feed these kids. I need to get on to tomorrow's video because one thing I'm not going to do in 2020 is slow down. I've got so many videos. I got more coming with Steve Price who I did the turtle video with. Rico and I are going to do stuff. Blue James is coming back. For those of y'all that watched me go to Colorado elk hunt and all that, that's James. He's coming with me and we're going to the Everglades this weekend. Probably going to get a little bit dangerous down there, I'm not going to lie. But Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button because I'm going to try to stick with every other day, every other day from here on out. Frank's fat and happy. We're all happy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. But like Jake always says, we're getting up out of here and we're getting out of shape. See y'all. That's the last sunset of 2019. This also marks six months of me doing YouTube. Look at me now. 155,000 subscribers going strong, gaining every day thank all of y'all for everything you do that's from the bottom of my heart what an awesome world we live in